Hey, Mr. Cleve Dunson. Uh, I think it has been about one year and nine months yeah. uh, that you got your mini gastric bypass done. Okay, could, could you just narrate and brief about the whole story in your case? How are you before the surgery? How you feel now, mm -hmm. one year and nine months after the surgery? Well, uh, I was at around about 120 kilos. Mm -hmm. I'm now 80 kilos. Mm -hmm. So that's a 40 kilo loss, approximately 65% of excess weight mm -hmm. uh, loss, which is uh, what I was told to told before the operation. So it's achieved that. More importantly, um, the diabetes has gone. My HbA1c is 5.2, which is practically normal. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's the same as my wife. I had her, her measured. She's not diabetic. Mm -hmm. So we have the same blood sugars. Uh, blood pressure is normal, mm -hmm. um, slightly elevated cholesterol, um, but apart from that, uh, all the health problems I had before, I had rashes uh, in the groin because of you know the uh, compressed skin, making yeah. it moist, and mm -hmm. that's all disappeared. Mm -hmm. So all my medical problems uh, really have, have gone okay. now. Oh, what was your HbA1c before surgery? Uh, it was around about seven, which is only, you know, fair. Okay, okay. Um, so, you know, it's been a miraculous But thing. now it's 5.2. 5.2. Okay. Uh, I'm still maybe 10 kilos overweight, so, mm -hmm. you know, if I regain normal weight, mm -hmm. it'd probably be even less. I'd probably get four down to 4.7, 4.8, you know. So now your weight has uh, stabilized. Is it going up or is it going down now? It's, it's stable. The last six months I've lost one or two kilos so basically I, I've realized I've come to the okay. limit of my weight loss but it's you know I, I've achieved everything I have wanted to do okay um, that's good. you know so I'm are quite happy doing, with that are you doing some exercise as well well I try to but uh, you know I lead a busy life I live in the inner city and uh -huh. it's not so easy to get recreational opportunity Okay, so um, so it's, it's not as as much I was like. Good. So this um, is like without any exercise. Yeah, this is without uh, yeah, any yeah. exercise, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, cheating by little by having chocolate, you know, which is the weakness <laughs> before. So it's just Good. miraculous. If I didn't have any chocolate, okay. I would have lost even more weight. But uh, you know. Why did you select this mini gastric bypass over the Roux and Y gastric bypass? Were you aware of this thing that uh, which surgery are you going to undergo and what are the differences in the two surgeries? I had booked for a Roux and Y. I had, uh, I had gone to surgeons in the Philippines where my wife's come from mm -hmm. and uh, I'd done research uh, in Belgium where mm -hmm. Roux and Y. So I was planning to do Roux and Y mm -hmm. and then suddenly I came across the, the mini gastric bypass. Mm -hmm. I watched Dr. Rutledge's uh, videos mm -hmm. and um, it just seems, you know, a very good mm -hmm. operation. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. Kalar at, at that time was the only surgeon outside of America doing the operation that I could see on... on not the not outside of America, there are a lot of many centers well, now, in different Now countries. they started, yeah. Central America is starting Yeah, the mini gastric bypass. And it hasn't been mentioned in Italy, yeah. I'm starting to read, but at that time... Okay, you could not find time, anybody else, all right. The only one that was, uh -huh. you know, in a country that was easily available for me mm -hmm. to go to, unlike in Russia or so forth. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Kula was the only one outside of mm -hmm. America, and of course America Okay. It's very expensive for someone yeah. for, for, for me to go so, to. So uh, what, what about the bile reflux or any gastritis, any, anything with, uh, in the upper abdomen? You well, have I had an endoscopy last year and mm -hmm. that was completely clear, no gastritis or anything. And okay. I've never had any stomach uh, problems or I never felt any pain from the operation. Okay. And it's been, uh, you know, completely Because as you, as you already know, that only concern with the mini gastric bypass is that the patient can have a bile reflux which can cause gastritis inside. Oh. But practically what we see that most of our patients don't have it. Yeah, well, so, I, haven't, I yeah. haven't, as of yet, I've had no problems mm -hmm. in, in the couple of years. Yeah. I think in the last couple of months, my stomach is telling me if I go without food for four or five hours, uh -huh. I get a slight sensation saying that, Yes, I think it's time you did eat. Okay. Um, this has only come about because it's not pain as such, but just a sensation that uh, I think it's time you ought to have some food. Oh. Uh, so that's the only thing I, I've noticed. Okay. Um, but Are you taking some antacids regularly? No, I've never had to take any. I haven't taken any. You have not? No. Good. Um, so I've never had any problems. But yeah. In, yeah, in the last couple of months, the stomach is saying, don't go for a long period without having anything. 
All right. Um, but it's not pain as such. It's just a slight sensation. Maybe I'm imagining it. Okay. But that says don't go for f more than four or five hours without any food. Yeah, because that's a normal either. feeling of hunger yeah. which you should have, which one must have. Uh, but definitely you're not having any gastritis and. Uh, and the same thing was documented well in your endoscopy that you did not have even any it's erosions or anything of that sort inside. So that, that's quite good. And you should have uh, endoscopies like uh, you can have it every two years or even every three years. Mm -hmm. But if you feel some pain in the upper abdomen, which is regular, and uh, that can be an indication that you are having something wrong inside. And for that, you can definitely get one endoscopy done anytime. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think you should be doing good and uh, you should take uh, curd uh, which is uh, a good antacid good so, yeah very good G-O-U-R-D no not no, uh, it's the curd curd oh curd curd C-U-R-D yeah. curd yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes curd yeah so well, we don't really seem to have that in England curds uh, uh, you don't have it well, I'm not really with it. Yogurt. Oh, yogurt. Yeah, yogurt. it's the same thing. Ah, yeah. uh, yes, yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know yogurt. Dr. Rutledge recommended yes. yeah. Yeah, yogurt. yogurt. I've never yeah. been a great yogurt eater, but uh, okay. no doubt I should start to have it. Yes, yogurt. Yes. Okay, that's good. So, uh, what about the calcium, vitamins and iron? Are you taking it regularly? Yes, I, I religiously stick to the recommended dosages. Okay. Um, two calcium a day, two multivitamin. You're um, getting your blood levels done? Um, I, I come every year to see Dr. Kular for my checkup. Okay. Um, but I have regular blood tests in England every six months, being as a, a diabetic before. Okay. But they, they do a, a monitoring of my kidneys and so forth, and never problems right. been shown up. Slightly high on the cholesterol. Okay. Uh, but apart from that, completely normal. Good, good, that's good. So, all the best for you. And uh, today we'll have your uh, barium meal just to see the size of the pouch, and then we'll get your routine blood investigations which are required after a normal bypass. Okay. All the best for you. Thank you very much. Yeah.